Author Tom Zollner's family has been in Arizona for five generations. He's chronicled our state in many different ways. His book, A Safe Way in Arizona, helped us understand the Tucson shootings that nearly took the life of Zollner's longtime friend, Gabby Giffords. Zollner's latest book, Something of a Departure, it's called Island on Fire, the revolt that ended slavery in the British Empire. It's history students don't learn in American classrooms, but I think you'll find the story resonates today. I hope you enjoy our conversation. Tom Zollner, welcome to Square Off. It's good to be here, thank you. Great to see you. You've written eight nonfiction books. What kind of stories appeal to you? Well, I, I got my start uh, in Arizona writing for my high school newspaper in Tucson and was later privileged to work at the Arizona Republic. And the stories that most appeal have a deep, a historical resonance, a, a context that makes uh, sense of historic events. You've also been a chronicler of Arizona, walking the Arizona Trail, writing about the Tucson shootings uh, in the book, A Safe Way uh, in Arizona. You seem to be trying to understand Arizona and sharing that with the outside world. What have you figured out about our state? Oh my gosh, so much. I, I think writers who um, attempt these kinds of projects are in some way trying to understand their own childhood, that this is uh, a deep mystery that uh, they spend the rest of their lives uh, trying to get to the bottom of. And I remember being a, a Republic reporter, uh, you know, doing journalism in some of the same neighborhoods that I had grown up in, um, seeing some of the same people, in fact, on Channel 12, uh, in real life that uh, were newscasters when I was a kid. And so there's a circularity to all this. That's fascinating. So your new book uh, takes us to 19th century Jamaica, a slave rebellion against the British Empire. How did you find the story and why, just, why did you decide to do it? This started as a much uh, bigger story, so to speak. I was really interested in sugar which um, is the condiment that created the economy of uh, the Caribbean in the 16th and 17th centuries. Um, it was a substance that was uh, toxic, but nevertheless, the British were addicted to it. And it created the famous triangle trade that uh, many of us uh, learned in school, the manufactured goods to uh, the coast of West Africa, uh, kidnapped. Uh, human beings to the Caribbean and the U.S. South, and then commodity products like sugar and cotton uh, back to the mother country. Um, but this was just too big a project to uh, kind of con conceive of as a single book. But I'd learned of the Christmas Rebellion, which of course is part of Caribbean history. It's just I had never learned of it. And I couldn't discover that there had ever been really a single uh, wide circulation book on the issue in the one of these cases of the more you learn, the more you want to learn. And the Christmas Rebellion is the story you chronicle uh, in Island uh, on Fire. How much of a challenge was it to uh, just do the research, do the journalism uh, on what happened? Yeah, this took uh, two trips to Jamaica to um, go through the archives, what uh, material was, was available there, as well as a trip to uh, Great Britain to look at the colonial documents, and then to the west coast of Africa, what used to be known as the Slave Coast, where uh, there was a series of castles, uh, as they were called, these uh, edifices built, um, horrific places where kidnapped human beings were, were held there, um, awaiting being loaded on board a ship to um, a, a terrible new life. And so seeing these uh, edifices was personally meaningful. And the island on fire is the image you use for the, the title of the book, but it's also the lead image in the book. What, what does that describe? The rebellion of enslaved people involved primarily fire. Um, the, the burning down of what were called trash houses, which is where you stored the waste product from sugar. And every witness to this uh, always mentioned the fires. Uh, they described them in lavish detail. And it's the primary uh, ingredient for rebellion. And it also has a little bit of a double meaning because um, this was a, a, a military defeat for the enslaved people. Um, but it created a firestorm, so to speak, uh, back in Great Britain, where uh, Parliament 
came to realize that this is, uh, 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 first of all, a humanitarian disaster, uh, a, a military expenditure uh, beyond what we can afford. And so they made the decision um, a, a bit like the United States made in Vietnam. That this is just an unwinnable war, quote unquote. And we have to make the rather cold blooded decision to get rid of slavery. And so the double meaning is that the island of Great Britain was also on fire with uh, this question. And so the British Empire abolished slavery in the 1830s, late 1830s. Do I have that right? That's correct. So compare and contrast with why it took America decades more and really a war uh, to abolish slavery. That, that is a fascinating question. The, the, the British um, did the necessary thing with the horrific institute of, institution of slavery in the 1830s, and it took us until the 1860s with a, a, a vast effusion of blood um, to do the necessary thing. And Britain uh, escaped this fate uh, for, for myriad reasons, which I go to in the book. Uh, but I'll just sort of say that one primary uh, reason was that um, the, uh, the, the white Jamaicans, uh, British, didn't feel the same sort of pride in their geography as did U.S. slaveholders. And so there was far less of a, of a patriotism there. The, the, also that the Royal Navy could have easily blockaded the entire uh, island of Jamaica without too much trouble and essentially starved them out in a way that the Union was uh, not really able to do effectively with the Confederates. What is there about this book, the story you tell, that resonates today? These enslaved people um, demonstrated tremendous heroism. And this started, I think it's important to note, as a nonviolent movement that uh, the Baptist preacher Samuel Sharp instructed those who were going to participate in this uh, rebellion, which started on December 27, 1831, that, look, we're not going to fight. We're going to sit down and ask simply for uh, wages for the labor that we do in the in the sugarcane fields. He, he did not start off like Toussaint Louverture, uh, who uh, wanted to make Haiti independent. Uh, he didn't want that. He wanted to remain a British subject. And uh, what happened was a conflagration. They were attacked. They defended themselves. Uh, they were defeated, but they sent a, a message which had seismic implications across the globe. And we have to end it there. The book is Island on Fire. The author is Tom Zollner. Tom, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Brian. You can see all of our Sunday Square Off coverage on our YouTube channel. Go to 12news.com slash YouTube. That's our show for this week. Thanks very much to all of our guests, and thank you so much for joining us. Be well, be safe, and we'll see you back here next weekend for another round of Sunday Square Off.